it's a great opportunity for the business leaders in the room to engage with the president um, and to talk about some of these issues that he shared. It's exciting times for Kenya, U.S. business, and it would be wonderful to hear from those here in the room. I'm going to start with Visa. Um, Ms. Adama Iwu, uh, Head of External Partnerships and Political Strategy. Do you have a question that you would raise with the President or any of the leaders on the stage? It just means government in your hands. And uh, this is a program that uh, she, she is pointed to because we are, two years ago, we had only 320 government services available online. Today, we have 21,000 government services available online. And this was a deliberate strategy to leverage on technology and the digital space to make government much more efficient and to much, make government much more transparent. Um, so not only are government services available online, but government payments, which initially were largely in cash by check and, 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 other, and, and other sticky you know, uh, mechanisms, today you can pay literally for any government service from the comfort of your home using M-Pesa. And, and that is the trajectory. It is uh, our plan that by the end of this year, God willing, every government service will be available online. And we want to thank Visa for what they are doing with our uh, State Department for Citizen Services. We are expanding that space. We are working with other partners to leverage, of course, on technology as we uh, move into uh, that uh, uh, technology space. And it's not just government business. We're trying to um, expand the digital footprint around the country. We are currently engaged between uh, the Ministry of ICT, <laughs> Ministry of uh, Power and uh, Energy to um, uh, spread the fiber optic footprint around Kenya. And uh, that, that, that has its own competitive issues. I know I have uh, my CEO for Safaricom here. Sometimes he's not very happy with me <laughs> <laughs> for bringing other characters like Elon Musk and others into the space. <laughs> uh, but you see, uh, um, I keep encouraging uh, Peter that uh, competition makes you, you know, keep ahead. And he's been doing pretty well, I must admit. He's, he's really up this game. And, uh, and, and so that element of competition, and that is why even as we have a conversation with Visa, we're also in conversation with MasterCard, and we're in conversation with others, because we want to keep that space competitive. And uh, I just want to confirm here that um, we're doing 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic around Kenya. We want to connect 10,000 institutions, hospitals, schools, markets, uh, with hotspot and with uh, fiber optic so that we can expand uh, e-commerce, we can access uh, government services because shortly we want to run a paperless government. Thank you for that, Your Excellency. 
Let's turn to the uh, financial services sector. Um, a question from Mr. Selo Moloko, Group Chairman at AXA Bank. Uh, good morning, Mr. President. My name is Selo Moloko from South Africa. Um, Mr. President, maybe I should just share a quick uh, personal message I've just sent to my son, who's based here in New York, uh, who uh, shared with me on Saturday that uh, he wants to move in to Kenya uh, to work on a renewable energy project. So I just sent him a text saying that I've just listened to one of the best presentations on an economy. Uh, by an African head of state, the best ever. I don't say this lightly, Mr. President. Uh, as APSA, obviously, we uh, are looking to expand our horizons into the continent outside of South Africa. Kenya is proving for us to be a very important um, part of that expansion into the rest of the continent. Um, certainly, we've been watching the events unfold in Kenya. And um, we remain committed, and our commitment is unwavering because we see Kenya as one of the anchors of our strategy outside of South Africa. But I'm tempted to ask the question, Mr. President, around maybe for you just to give us a flavor of the financial reforms, um, because obviously as a systemic, systemically important institution, that's one of the things that we're looking at. Encouraged by the speech today, and um, has confirmed to me that my son is making the right call and that we at APSA are making the right call. But we just need to understand uh, progress that's been made with regards to the financial reforms in the country. You're so correct on uh, the space around uh, financial reforms. You just had me mention about what we are doing around having a predictable tax regime that makes it easy for business to plan at this long term in, in terms of what what is the fiscal space, what are the the taxes in place. Um, and we have been continuously reviewing that space. As I told you, we take a lot of feedback. We had a, a, a meeting with the American Chamber of Commerce. We've had meetings with uh, different groups. Later this um, in December, we going to have another European um, with, 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 with EU a conversation around what they think about our tax regime, so that we can align it with best practice. Let me give you an example. Digital tax has really given us some headache. But finally, we decided to align our digital tax with OECD standards. That way, we don't offend anybody and we keep the standard above board. We had challenges with VAT returns. I made the decision that once VAT returns are certified, if you are not paid, by our revenue authorities within six months, you can then net off those returns on your other tax obligations. That way, uh, I, I make compliance both ways, you know, so that uh, either they pay you on time or they, loot, or, or they lose their tax because you have to recover from what they are doing. So we are continuously improving that tax space to make sure that uh, we are we are aligned. Let me also um, say that uh, the reason why we are expanding space around special economic zones, around export processing zones, is because we want to have a predictable uh, regime in that space that has clear tax incentives that you can think about 10 years, you can plan 20 years as you invest uh, in that in that space. Um, APSA has been a great partner of the Republic of Kenya with a very big uh, footprint. I'm happy that uh, you are thinking about that space one more time. And if there is anything that we can do specifically for APSA, please let us know. We will be at hand to deal with it. I have um, my chief of staff here, Eden, who is um, um, 
who is for your information. He's a, he's a former employee of APSA. <laughs> so he, he knows uh, he knows his way around. <laughs> thank you, Your Excellency, and thank you, Mr. Moloko, particularly for that um, personal vignette. Um, let's turn now to Mr. Charles Murito. Uh, this Excellency referenced the 30% uh, request of shares from Google previously. Mr. Murito is Director of Sub-Saharan Africa for Google. Do you have a question for the President? I answered all his questions. <laughs> <laughs> that you did. So, Your Excellency, I think what I may ask uh, is perhaps make a quick comment, um, especially as Kenya is working towards um, its economic prosperity journey. It's imperative for us to really harness the power of AI, uh, which um, I, I was happy that no one mentioned it before, so that at least I get the opportunity to be the first to talk <laughs> about it here. Um, but as we think about that, AI is definitely going to have great impact, not just uh, in terms of the technology itself, but thinking about some of the things that you mentioned around agriculture, around health, education as well. And it's something that really we think about as what we call a general purpose technology, which is really the foundation of everything else to be built upon. So it's not about technology itself, but really what it can do to accelerate um, the economic growth, and as we know, we in Africa definitely need that. So, Your Excellency, as you know, we did sign our joint statement of collaboration earlier this year um, in DC, and there's been quite a lot of progress uh, in that around the national AI pro policy, and we commend your government for working closely on that. So, my question to you, and really my offer, is that we as Google are working closely with other technology companies as well as other private sector companies are really on standby to offer any support that you and your administration want. Um, and so please reach out to us if we need to uh, help, um, especially around AI and all the implications that it can have to accelerate, techno um, to accelerate uh, the economic growth for Kenya and all the other countries across the continent. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much, Charles, and uh, I agree with you that um, your support in that space around AI has been immense. We have, um, we are actually playing catch up because I was very pleasantly surprised. I went to one of our technical training colleges and I found a young man there, I think his name was Brian. And Brian told me that he is working for an AI company in Germany. And this is a college that is in remote Kenya, 400 kilometers from Nairobi. That Brian doesn't have a passport. He has never been to the capital city of Nairobi, but he works for an AI company in Germany. <laughs> that is, you know, the kind of space where we are. Meanwhile, as government, we are yet to figure out how to deal with AI. We are, we've just finished the policy and uh, I'm happy to report here that Parliament is now seized with the necessary legislation and guidelines that will support our AI uh, journey. But already we are leveraging on AI to do two very important things. One, we are leveraging on AI to do our means testing instrument for how we are distributing education money to beneficiaries so that we can use AI to get the algorithms that will give us who, who, what is the financial status of which parent. We are using the same to desegregate how we distribute our fertilizer to farmers. And we are now using it for the beneficiaries of our universal health coverage program. There are people who government has to pay for because they cannot afford, again, AI, is helping us in that space. But finally, maybe something that I would ask uh, um, Charles here is the challenge we have with the negative effects of AI. We have a lot of generative stuff, fake news, misinformation, disinformation, 
some of it that hardly people know can 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 know what is true from what is not true and and it is quite a menace so again that's the space that we need to work together and finally to think about cyber security we, we still have uh, very serious challenges around uh, cyber security sometimes i have to call peter to figure out when government services are attacked and he's been immensely useful with the uh, safaricom and other players so again uh, i think there is scope for us uh, to collaborate with google and others so that we can better secure that place and you know even the conversation we are having in the summit of the future is about artificial intelligence the misuse and the misuse you know there are those who are missing the opportunity to use it and there are those of course who are in the space i have talked about so again that is space we can all think about thank you your excellency and thank you charles for for that question i'm going to turn this now to mr yunus tamer Senior Director, Government Relations and Public Policy at Procter and Gamble, and Eunice, I'm wondering if uh, Charles referenced that AI had not been uh, spoken about before, so it's something new. If you have a new question for for the president, not to put any put you on the spot. <laughs> Definitely, I'm put on the spot. Thank you so much. So welcome. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, um, it was, I really was glad to hear about the uh, you know potential and expansion of the U.S. Kenya trade agreement, and of course the tax reforms we're talking about internally are are massive and very well appreciated. Um, one other further area that can improve for the further ecosystem for us as Procter and Gamble is um, you know the expansion of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement deployment across the continent. It's a great opportunity across the board for inter-Africa trade. And associated with that is the harmonization of uh, the the Kenyan product standards um, in terms of um, you know being compatible with the globe. So um, whenever they are compatible, it, it opens the doors for Kenyan products, new products to be exported to the rest of Africa and the rest of the world at ease. So just a comment, no questions here. Just an appreciation of uh, of the development that's happening in Kenya. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Eunice. Uh, so we'll turn now to Ms. Tara Nathan. Tara, where are you? Okay, wonderful. Executive Vice President for Humanitarian and Development and EVP and founder of Community Pass uh, and MasterCard. Uh, Tara, do you have any question for His Excellency? Uh, yes, hello, uh, Mr. President. I think we had the honor to meet uh, when you were here in May to talk about Community Pass at MasterCard, which is um, also, uh, I'll be the second to mention AI, but it's um, for digital technology. But for us, one of the things that we're doing via digital technology is making sure on how that's applied to rural, remote communities and making sure that no one's left behind in this digital revolution that we're talking about. Um, Community Pass focuses on rural smallholder farmers. So I would love to hear a little bit more about the agricultural sector as uh, we had a chance to talk about for us when we think about digital technology at MasterCard and through Community Pass, it's really about figuring out how can digital technology not only provide identities, but provide access to markets so that farmers can get competitive bids, how they can get access to authentic and pure inputs so that they know that the seeds uh, that they're planting are real, um, that they get access to credit. The main thing that we're really focused on is taking that ecosystem approach, which I think we talked about. So one of the things that we're very proud of is we talked to you, Mr. President, about the Made Alliance, the mobilizing access to the digital economy which uh, in Africa, which we um, announced um, at the uh, call to action from Vice President Harris uh, in May. We're proud to announce that now we're launching it in Kenya. And in fact, Community Pass, I should say, was actually innovated and developed in Kenya and we exported it uh, across the world. It's now live in seven different markets across the globe. But very interested sort of hear more about um, your thoughts around digitization, specifically in the agriculture space or in the space of the smallholder farmer and sort of reaching the, those folks that are rural, that are more marginalized, um, that, that constitute over seven million or close to seven million inhabitants across Africa, across Kenya, sorry. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. A year and a half ago, we decided that we are going to distribute our fertilizer on a digital platform using uh, e-voucher. E uh, e we registered 5 million farmers. And every farmer today in Kenya has a voucher that gives them a government subsidy and therefore they pay less what the government has subsidized on fertilizer. It is amazing. And in fact, I went to one of the depots to see. There is no cash. Everybody has come with their phone, with their voucher, and they are paying using a digital platform. It has done three things for, for our Kenyan farmers. It has increased efficiency. It has increased transparency. And today we have a record as government as to how much money we are going to pay because we can easily reconcile the vouchers that have been given out by our um, depots from what the farmers have bought. And number three, it has also given us accuracy that farmers are buying seeds and fertilizer that is certified by, uh, by, by our CAFIS, the certifying agency in Kenya. So um, Peter here will tell you they worked with us on uh, developing, again, uh, uh, the voucher framework with them, and many banks are part of that ecosystem. And I'm sure uh, my good brother here from NCBA can confirm that the banking industry are now part of that ecosystem of working with us on that digital platform to be able to um, distribute fertilizer. One last thing is uh, it's very interesting uh, today on the predictability of weather. I mean, the, the simple gadgets that today are being used by farmers to know when to plant. They, they can predict up to a month of what's going to happen. And I find uh, even in my farm that my farm manager can tell me we should plant on Tuesday next week because there will be rain on Thursday and Friday. And, and that really is, is phenomenal. This is, this is something that has never been the case. So there is much more accuracy, especially in the context of climate change, on when farmers can plant, on when they can do the next step. And therefore, I would look forward to uh, the rollout of um, uh, the technology you have talked to me about, and hopefully we can build it into the ecosystem that exists at the moment. Thank you, Your Excellency. Last question we have from John Kachora of Kenyan Private Sector Alliance. We heard earlier from Jazz for Kepsa. John, where are you? I, I am here. Maybe, maybe. Ah, <laughs> I couldn't find you in the audience. That would be why. <laughs> maybe what I'll do is make a couple of comments. I, uh, when the president was speaking, uh, there were a couple of questions regarding accessibility finance from Adama and, of course, from the chairman, the former chairman. From Absa, I'm also from Absa, by the way. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, on financial reforms, I thought I would really measure two things. One is that Kenya has one of the highest financial inclusion rates in Africa, at 86 percent as of uh, last year. It's one of the highest in Africa. Beyond that, I think is the question of what the government has done. I think one thing that perhaps is not talked out a lot, Your Excellency, is the effect of the Hassa Fund as far as financial inclusion is concerned. Um, quite often we measure financial inclusion in terms of transactions, and of course MPES has done a very good job of bringing people into that. But I think really financial inclusion must have the other two components, which is savings as well as borrowings. And I think what Hasler Fund has done is bring the rest of the population that was bringing transactions at MPES but not being able to borrow and to save into that survey culture. So today I would say that number, I'm waiting for the next survey. I would say, Your Excellency, I'll be surprised if you're not over 90% in terms of financial inclusion. So really good job on, on, on that. I think the other 
comment that perhaps I would make is that obviously there was the news about Kenya getting green listed as far as the United is concerned. And I think what is, again, I would like to talk about is the reforms that the government has put in place to make sure that Kenya is on the global standard as far as AML and uh, financing of foreign is concerned. Parliament enacted a very strict law that really put us on a very global scale. If you look at our laws today, probably the best in the world as far as this AML issue is concerned. So really, those are the two reforms I want to talk about as being key things that the government has done. I think beyond that, the president has talked about the digitization of government um, services. I would say today, uh, Kenya is a country where you can pay for everything to do with govern government on the digital line. Yeah? It doesn't matter who you are, you can get on it and make, make payments. And, and I think that really has helped, one, in terms of education, two, in terms of the use of AI, as the president has talked about, and the last one I would say, your extent is that I'm also a small scale farmer. I have I have my voucher for fertilizer, so I want to I want to say I'm uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By, by, by the way, John, I also have mine. Thank you, John. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, round of applause to thank President Rucha. really for such an engaging dialogue. I think a couple um, takeaways. One is all roads lead from ABSA, apparently, uh, to Kenya. Um, but really, just exciting to hear of the significant um, incentives that are being put in place in Kenya to support business. Uh, it's an exciting time to, to invest. Um, I'd like to invite Pita Indegwa, CEO of Safaricom, to come and give some brief closing remarks and then we'll have a vote of thanks and bring our program to a close. Thank you, Peter. Let me try what John asked. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for His Excellency to, to sit. I don't start speaking before Your Excellency sits here. I might be in trouble. You know, I should say that uh, Safaricom, which I work for, uh, uh, is one of the most successful uh, privatization, where the government still holds 35%. Uh, so it's a very good private sector public-private partnership uh, and uh, um, the reason I'm saying that is I have to behave because His Excellency is my shareholder. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Your Excellency, the, the, the President of the Republic of Kenya, uh, William Samuel Ruto, uh, all protocols observed, um, distinguished guests, uh, good morning. Um, I've, I'm going to make a few comments, uh, both as a key private sector player uh, in the market of Kenya and also in the region. We've just gone into, into Ethiopia. Um, a successful business uh, in East Africa, uh, the Safaricom PLC, you'll have heard the president mention a few times, is the largest telecommunication business. Uh, it, uh, we serve about 30, 36 million customers uh, in Kenya, almost basically the whole population. Uh, and also the pioneer of M-Pesa, uh, which is the most successful uh, uh, mobile payment platform uh, in the region and, and actually I should say globally has set the standards, uh, transacts about a billion dollars uh, every day uh, and actually um, um, the, the international money transfer which is all the money the diaspora sent to the country uh, is now just about four and a half billion dollars of which about half comes from the US. Uh, so. Um, when the president, who is our chief marketing officer, actually speaks about uh, Kenya being a digital hub, uh, it is actually true and we have demonstrable local companies that are leading the way 
uh, in, in the region. And we've just now gone into Ethiopia, uh, where we are investing about two and a half billion dollars to start a new operation and also see another success uh, with mobile money. So delighted to be here. Uh, it's been a quite an engaging uh, forum this morning. Thank you, Excellency, for marketing our country. Uh, and also all the other uh, speakers who have spoken about um, and showcased uh, Kenya. The private sector continues to actively contribute to the economy through job creation, technology and infrastructure investment, and community programs. Uh, and as we see at Safaricom, it's about not just technology, but using technology to, to provide solutions that solve societal problems. Whether that is in healthcare, you'll have heard, in agriculture with the vouchering program, uh, driving digital inclusion and also financial inclusion across the country. The private sector plays a vital role in accelerating the SDGs and we are all here this week to talk about the SDGs, which we know are behind uh, and, and, and private sector plays a crucial role uh, in this area and SDGs are crucial for uh, development. We will be participating in several stakeholder forums this week where we will look at how best to approach key SDGs targets and follow up with commitments towards achieving them. As Kenya business leaders, we are privileged uh, to have the support of our government, who is leader, the leadership of His Excellency William Ruto. When I listen to the President always speaking, we say, say no more. Uh, he is a, a chief marketing officer who has enabled efforts to drive innovation and economic outcomes through uh, a digital uh, superhighway, which you'll have heard him speak about. The digital superhighway has created opportunities in streamlining government services which has improved outputs and digitization of records. This has been facilitated by private sector investment in technology, some of which were mentioned today, and we are very happy to be involved. And this is broad partnerships between banks, technology companies, private sector players uh, across, across the board. Our role as private sector has been to support uh, digital transformation by investing in infrastructure, in financial support, and in have heard John speaking, and also in training. So I urge everyone in the room uh, and, and potential investors in particular uh, from the US to take this opportunity to invest in Kenya and to take cognizance of the digital revolution that is happening. As members of KEPSA, we are ready to support um, any engagement with the public sector and deepen private sector involvement in steering uh, the economy forward. And um, very happy to be here and thank you for your participation. Thank you very much this morning. Uh, thank you so much. I am here to give the vote of thanks, but uh, let me also say that um, uh, I spoke over the weekend with uh, Carol Karayuki, who, who, who said she was so sorry she couldn't be here. And as a long time uh, partner uh, with her, CCA and KEPSA, I just wanted to um, acknowledge that and acknowledge her work uh, at KEPSA as well. Uh, so uh, thank you, thank you so much, Your Excellency, for being here, for being a visionary leader, not just of Kenya, but of Africa. And uh, please know that Corporate Council on Africa that focuses solely and exclusively on building trade, investment, and business with Africa is always here to support Kenya and your vision. Holy, holy <laughs> that is... <laughs> Thank you very much. I know this is out of protocol, but I just thought of uh, saying just one thing. Um, Peter has spoken very eloquently about uh, what we're doing and that the uh, government of Kenya is a shareholder in his and when he mentioned shareholder I thought about dividends <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he has said that uh, um, I'm the chief marketing manager you know I, I have to really work hard because Kenyans set very high standards for me 
I, I really have no choice. And uh, good is not good enough. They only believe in excellent. So that's why sometimes, uh, you know, when, when, when I'm doing something good, they, they still push me. Uh, sometimes there's a little demonstration here that you're not doing as much as we told you to do. <laughs> but uh, it just speaks to what we, are, what we have to do. And as we do that in, in Kenya, uh, and I have spoken to you broadly about the expanded uh, Pan-African space, and I just thought that in our midst, we have our former Prime Minister, the Honorable Raila Odinga, who is uh, gunning for the chair of the Africa Union Commission, because as a country, I lead the charge on reform of the AU, and there cannot be any better reform than having the correct leadership to drive the African agenda. And so uh, I just thought of introducing uh, Raila Odinga, our former Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency, and thank you, Flory. Um, with that, we bring our conversation to a close. What a treat to have had um, these remarks from the President of Kenya, as well as this engaging dialogue with the business leaders, um, both within the U.S. and in Kenya.